One morning, we were all called into the St. Charles Room, a big banquet room on campus, and asked if we had hurricane evacuation plans. I didn't even know there was a storm in the Gulf because we had been working so many long days and long nights that I hadn't seen the news. But it was to be. Hurricane Katrina came in that August of 2005 and changed our lives since. Nobody is the same. Homes aren't where they used to be. Communities aren't where they used to be. But we could see that just as tragedy. We could see the pain and the hurt that was caused by Katrina, the dishevelment that was caused. Or we could choose to see something else. And so we went about cleaning, getting rid of, and trying to rebuild our lives. We had some guys who came, some volunteers who came to assist us and help us clean out the house. It was a major undertaking. And I can remember the day that they started. We found one Rubbermaid bin in the house, and that bin was the only thing that had not gotten wet. My mother had the bin outside the house on the lawn up near the house. My grandmother and I were at the minivan. She's sitting down me standing there trying to convince her. I could not find her pink and shears in the rubble of this aftermath. But she was a seamstress, and a seamstress knows that a good pair of scissors is like gold in the hand, and she wanted those scissors. And as that was happening, I remember my mother saying, what is this? and holding up this chalice. And I turned around and I immediately knew what it was. Now, at the time, it didn't look like this. No, it was black and smelled horrible from being in a house with no AC. It was dirty. And at the same time that my mother was doing that, the volunteers who were with us were taking stuff out of my room. So right next to me on the curb were my belongings, my possessions. And I heard very clearly, come and follow me. Everything was gone. My material possessions in life were gone. And God was asking me to come and follow him. At the time I was studying politics, the getting my bachelor's in political science at Loyola University, thinking I was going to eventually go to law school and become a politician. But God had other plans. Two years later, I entered the seminary, and in 2013, just two years ago, I was ordained a priest for the Archdiocese of New Orleans. And it all started because of this chalice because God used the tragedy of Katrina to call me to something greater, call me to follow him, to conform my life more to his. Two years later, after finishing seminary, I have the privilege of standing here at the altar and offering the sacrifice. Who knew that 10 years could bring about this difference in my life? So my friends, I invite you to look for those places in your own life where God is saying, come and follow. Look for the chalice found in the rubble.